Hello everyone. So as we know we are moving with the module number 4 that is Ethics and Engineering. In the previous videos we have covered the topic what is Ethics, what is Ethics and Engineering, its definition, also making moral choices and in the last video we have covered resolving ethical dilemma. Today we are going to start a new topic that is accepting and sharing responsibilities. Engineers do matter a great deal whether it is a risk of a public health or the risk of an accident. It is important for an engineer to understand and act on their responsibilities. But there are different ways of looking at the responsibilities because some engineers are independent consultant or of consulting firms who provide services to client. However, most engineers are corporate employees. Whether the engineers are work on for clients or corporate employers, they have basic job responsibilities. There are various conceptions of responsibilities based on how engineers accept responsibilities or what others expect them to do as a part of their responsibilities. So here, when an engineer, when a manager faces some issues so, and how he accept and share the responsibilities, how he share to its employees, how he share to its client that we, we have discussed in this topic. Now let's understand how when a harm is done, the responsibility is distinguished as first intentionally causing harm that is knowingly and deliberately. Second type is negligently causing harm that is unknowingly but failing to exercise due care and third recklessly causing harm having conscious awareness that harm may occur but neglecting it without any intention of causing harm so here whether the harm is caused due to any of the above reasons engineers are morally responsible for any harm that has caused even if sometimes their superiors or the company may be legally at fault because they may have failed morally in failing to report or even present such behavior of a part of the others. More importantly, engineers have the responsibility to serve their employers and public in ways that prevent harm. How engineers view his or her responsibility? Now let's understand how an engineer views his or her responsibility depends on the three basic attitude towards the re responsibility which is which is dependent on the three basic attitudes let's understand one by one first is minimalist view this view holds that engineers are responsibility to conform to the standard procedures of their profession and fulfill the basic duties defined by the terms of their employment here in the first view that is minimalist view an engineer are responsible to only the standards given to them when an employee start his work they he or she has some responsibilities in his or her terms and conditions if he is fixed to that responsibility only then it is categorized in the first that is minimalist view if any harm is done due to failure of adhering of this standard procedures then only they are held responsible but this approach is based on the minimum requirement and if it may prove to be the insufficient at the time of unexpected problem this view usually bring about a negative approach like doing only what is within one's written duties and not going to beyond that this approach is limited to avoidance and blame and the main concern is staying out of trouble. Second is reasonable care. This view moves beyond the minimal view's concern. While in the minimal view, it is sufficient to adhere to the standard procedure. The reasonable care view aims to prevent any possible harm to the concerned people. The professional follows all standard procedures but evaluates the situation for any possible harm and then works to prevent it. It depends on the moral basis of an individual. 
the aim is to do whatever possible to avoid any kind of harm or accident so in the second type that is reasonable care it is more beyond the minimalist view that is the aim of an employer of an engineer is to do whatever possible to avoid any kamo any any kind of harm and accident and the third and the last type is beyond one duty with this view a professional assumes full responsibilities and if anything wrong happens he or she sees their own responsibilities hence they strive to do whatever it takes to make their work better and does even more than the required standards they always feel that they have to do the best and it is usually inadequate these people take such actions with an commendable but usually people around would take it for granted also if they don't take this actions most of us would not think that they are not taking this actions indicate moral shortcoming rather than putting responsibilities on each other shoulder they fully assumes their responsibilities which are self imposed most of the times when engineers strive to do the good by putting extra efforts they are discouraged due to the shortage of time resources limitations and other priorities so these are the three types how an engineer views his or her responsibilities depends on the employer's attitude now let's have a look on an activity names whistle blowing or right and the responsibilities of an engineer it is an activity in organization in the corporate world which an em- employee have to follow whistle blowing is an act by an employee of informing the public or higher management of unethical or illegal behavior of an employer or superior there can be a internal whistle blowing where an employee surpasses the immediate supervisors and report to the higher management about the wrong doing and external whistle blowing where the employees reports the unethical practices of one's organization to either media or law enforcement authorities so here two types of whistle blowing one is internal whistle blowing and other is the external whistle blowing as we have discussed it is an act of of by an employee of informing the public or the higher management of any unethical or the illegal behavior by the employers or supervisors whistle blowing can be considered as the responsibilities of an engineer to make other aware about the unethical practices which may harm the public it is also the right wherein the engineers can be protected for the consequences that he might face but whistle blowing must be done only when there is a dire need to do so that is there is a clear and considerable harm that can be avoided by it when one has complete knowledge of all the facts to support one's argument when one has complete capability to permit through to end and face the consequences and when whistle blowing is the last resort whistle blowing must only be done if you have already tried to put your point forward to your immediately authority and they have not considered it seriously so it is an activity which every employee in the organization have to follow and now let's understand the last topic of accepting and sharing responsibilities that is that is impediments of two responsibilities that is engineers why engineers fail to take up their share of responsibilities why engineers are have fear to take the responsibilities due to various there are various reasons let's understand one by one first is self interest engineers like others professionals have their own ambitions their self interest sometimes prevent them from looking at the interest of others and may even tempt to work contrary to their responsibilities so first is the self interest why engineers fail to take their responsibilities second is fear declaring a fault after discovering it requires a lot of courage if the responsibility of the fault is completely yours 
you may have the fear of losing your reputations and careers and whistleblowing about the fault of others like colleagues superiors or even the organization may invite lots of opposition and even loss of job third is self deception sometimes engineers do things which may be unethical because they may have self deception excuses like i am doing this for my organization or it works this way only such self deceptions avoid them to fulfill their responsibility as a professional fourth is ignorance lack of knowledge that a design is not safe enough naturally acts as a barrier to an engineer responsible act this lack of knowledge is sometimes due to the lack of willingness to do through the college one might have to face in solving the problem and sometimes due to the lack of time due to pressure of deadline fifth different per- perspective sometimes failure of understanding various perspectives may lead to not being able to see a problem that is otherwise very clear this is not intentionally but as we tend to think with our own perspectives we may not be able to analyze from different point of view and fail to recognize the problem sixth is lack of acceptance of authority engineers code of ethics emphasizes the importance of engineers ex- exercising independent objective judgment is performing their function this is called professional autonomy but more engineers work in super- su- supervisions of their bosses and so it is difficult for them to work with independent and objective judgment this results in their inability to exercise their responsibility as an engineer and the last is group think many engineers decision have failed just due to the group think when a collective decision have to be taken usually the member of the group agrees even if they do not want to first of all there is a less fear of failure as it is a collective decision members are not more serious about the morality because it is not their individual decision also they are not ready to be to be the reason for creating a disturbance in what is already going on and due to the strong feeling of belongingness they agree with all the members in the group finally the major role of group think is the pressure from the group leader to agree with the decision thus group think poses a challenge in thinking critically and the members do with the flow go with the flow even if they find it is a not audible so these are the seven reasons why engineers or a manager fails to sh- take the responsibilities first is self interest second is fear third is self deception then ignorance different perspective lack of acceptance of authority and last is the group thing so this is the last topic that is accepting and sharing responsibility of the module number 4 that is ethics in engineering so overall we have covered topics till today till this video is ethics ethics in engineering making moral choices resolving ethical dilemmas and today we have covered accepting and sharing responsibilities still there are two to three topics of module number 4 that is ethics and engineering that we will cover in the upcoming videos thank you